month. They've had over 40 cases of COVID. And they've had uh, Brother Paul McGowan, of course, passed away. Of course, he was 88 years old, but he did get, he was 88. Oh, I'm sorry, Brother Paul <clears throat> uh, Golden. And uh, Brother Paul Brother Paul McGowan, I think, is still alive. Um, and he's, yeah, he's not quite 88 yet. But then, um, let's see, I believe Brother, Brother uh, Arnold in the Wichita church has uh, he's gotten worse he, he actually I think he went home but I think he's back now and back in the hospital he's not doing very well so we need to pray for him and um, but uh, I think let's see brother Bloom went home um, Y'all may not know who Brother Bloom is. That's Brother Chuck Millsap's father-in-law, his mother's husband. Uh, and uh, she, by the way, uh, was in the Republic Church for a while. Um, then, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of who else several in the assembly has had it, but there's no one else in the hospital right now, so they're doing fairly well. Um, <clears throat> Brother Garland Driver and his wife and Brother and Sister Davis and, and uh, <clears throat> Wilson, North Carolina. Thank you, Sister Tally. And they, they're... Um, I think last I heard, Brother and Sister Davis is doing pretty good, but I got a report. I needed to check on it and haven't done it yet, but I got a report. I think it was either yesterday or Friday night that Brother Driver's in the hospital. I talked to him, and he was better, but then I heard Friday night that he's in the hospital with COVID. So we need to pray. This is a very unique disease. It just seems like people that you wouldn't think would have much trouble with it, some of them do, and people that you think would have a lot of trouble with it don't. Like, for an example, Brother Billy Brown had a very light case, never really, you know, he was a little sick, but he was over it in a few days, and he's, you know, he's fine. Uh, you would think Brother Driver versus Brother Davis that, and Sister Davis, she never even got a symptom, and she's fighting cancer, taking chemotherapy, so her immune system's got to be down. So it's just amazing. You just can't figure out, you know, what, how this thing works. <coughs> um, anyway, um, we just still need to pray for, I think, Sister Smith and I have figured 10 people in the body that we know of that have passed away with COVID-19. And that's... Uh, the Dominican Republic actually is on a... They're, they're really uh, not near as bad as they were in July and August. Uh, probably a fourth as bad. They're down, way down on... But I was talking to Brother Green and looking at it, and there's, there's 20... The Dominican Republic land mass size is one fourth the size of Arkansas. So the whole country is one fourth the size of this state. I think we've got 56 square, 56,000 square miles in Arkansas. I believe I'm right about that. And I think they've got 18,000 square miles. So. <clears throat> Uh, or maybe maybe it's 14. <clears throat> they're they're almost four time four times smaller than we are landmass wise. Now to help you understand, 
we have three million people in Arkansas. Huh? Yeah. I don't think so. No. No, it's three million. I just looked it up on Google last night because I was talking to Brother Green about it. Um, the, the, uh, and I believe that's 2020 figures. Somebody look it up for me. How much? Okay, 2019, 3,000,018 in the state of Arkansas, and <clears throat> the Dominican Republic have 12 million. They're one-fourth the size of this state. They've got four times as many people as we do. And they have about equal number of cases and about equal number of deaths. I think they've got 236 deaths. I think we've got something like that, right at that. So you have to see that they're not doing near as bad as, as America's doing. And they're, you know, if you look at their graph, they're, they were four times worse off as the number of cases in July, June and July, as they are in October and November. So they're down. I'm thinking about going over there until this is over. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't want to be over there and get it, I can tell you that. They still do have people dying over there with it and all. But, but uh, anyway, that's just a little information on, on the size of the Dominican Republic and how they're doing. Um, Oh, uh, I guess I'll bring y'all up on the water situation before we get into our Bible study. Um, I don't know, did I mention last week about the leak underground out there? Did I? Well, I think we said we think, didn't we? But we, we know now. Yeah, we know now we definitely have a, a water leak under the parking lot somewhere between our source our water source comes in right below the men's restroom and ties in just above the ceiling tile in the men's restroom downstairs and here in the dining room men's restroom that's where our source valve is our our water supply comes in there and there's where it ties in that supplies the rest of the building so brother Durham and uh, I don't know, Matt, you may have helped him. They shut off the water where our supply comes in while we were had water. They just shut it off. And then they shut it off at the backflow, backflow preventer. Out, It's out by the street by the fire department where the meter is and then down below it is a backflow preventer. And that, the meter valve won't shut off completely properly, but the backflow does. So they shut it off, and then they, how long did you wait, Brother Durham? Four hours. Four hours. They waited four hours, and then they put a pressure test on inside the building. We had 50 pounds of pressure in the building. Oh, that we, oh, that. You, did you uh, test that when you turned it off? We, we waited all night for that. Oh, they waited all night for that. We've tested it so many times. Yeah, so they couldn't find any leaks in the building but the toilets that were mounted shut anything. Off. The toilets were shut off, though, and we had 50 pounds of pressure inside the building with it turned off, so it was holding 50 pounds of pressure overnight. So then they checked the pressure from the backflow preventer to the supply valve zero pressure so it all leaked out overnight and it had to leak out under the parking lot because there's no leaks internal so so brother Durham and I talked to a company about having they can cut out a section like 
five, four foot square, five foot square by the back flow preventer, and then they cut out another one just below the men's restroom or just outside in front of the men's restroom where those hedges are. And they can bore and run a line underneath the parking lot. And they can bore a hole with, with boring equipment and run a new line underneath there that would come out right there in front of the men's restroom. And so Brother Durham and I was thinking, well, that's, you know, it's going to cost something, but maybe it won't be too bad. So we met them out here, and they figured that out, and it was $18,443. So we pretty well annihilated that idea. <laughs> So we thought we'd get Sister Tally to come over here and dig a ditch down in front of all of them red-tipped trees. <laughs> it cost us $2,700 to bore a hole underneath the plaque top and put a sleeve in there where we could run a pipe through it that would come in at the Linegar room and go out underneath the little parking lot, which is 30 feet out by that empty lot. Well, anyway, now we're thinking, uh, Brother McGowan mentioned it to me, and Brother Durham, Brother Matt had already talked about it, but hadn't pursued it too far about using the existing two-inch pipe that we've got a hole in, supply line, as a sleeve and see if we could push a hundred and, I mean, an inch and a half pipe underneath through that two-inch pipe which you could only do it with copper or a product called Plex. But copper, you know, could be a problem. It's very expensive, number one. But number two, the Plex will, would work if we don't have a bunch of bins. It looks like uh, I, we, we need to start writing some of this stuff down, you know, because when Brother McGowan's gone, and, and, and I'm gone. I've had to find out all this stuff. But there's going to come a day when nobody knows where none of this stuff is. And so we need to, we need to make some kind of notes on some of this. And then they, yeah, they don't remember too good. Like I, you know, I ask them, is, is that line straight? You know, is there any bends in it? Nobody knows. Well, if it's straight, we but you know we're 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 probably going to buy about right at a thousand dollars worth of pipe of that plex. The worst thing that can happen is if we can't get through, we can't push it. We're going to eat the plex. Except we're going to need over a hundred feet of it in the gym because we've got to replace that line. There's a leak also between the, this building and that building under the concrete. So that's, we've got that shut off, and we're going to have to replace that. <laughs> anyway. And the toilet's there, too. Yeah, well, Brother Durham, since, since all this, he's been, uh, it's like, you know, he can't leave it alone. He's got to find out every little thing, which I'm glad. But he has found out that all five toilets in the men and women's restroom leak. Got sl real slow leaks in them. So we're going to replace them. That two-inch line going down to inch-and-a-half supply, it was a concern, except w here's why I think an inch-and-a-half will work. Number one, when that two-inch was put in there, there was a fairly sizable school in this church running Monday through Friday with toilets going, water going way more than we use today. Plus, every toilet in the building used probably three and a half to five pounds, I mean five gallons per flush, which we've replaced all the toilets upstairs. Those toilets use one, probably 1.6 gallons. One and, one, one and two thirds gallons per flush. So less than half of the usage originally that the two inch line was doing. And there's your biggest use of water really is commode flushing. And you've got a lot of people. So, now these commodes down here, these five, plus the one in the kitchen is six. There's two in the gym. That's eight. And there's two upstairs on the platform. 
and two upstairs on the platform that are original commodes. And if we replace all of them, we'll cut way down even more. So there's very little doubt in my mind that an inch and a half supplies is adequate today with, with using more economical water usage in the existing commodes. Oh, we also use water saver faucets. Water saver faucets, yes. So anyway, that's where we're at. We're probably going to move forward and see if we can push that inch and a half line through the existing two inch line as a sleeve and see if that'll work. If it doesn't work, we, we may eat about half of the, we may have some water pipe for sale, inch and a half plex. <laughs> we, we will need probably half of it for the gym, so that's about 160, 70 feet that we'll have to push underground. Huh? Yeah, it'll have to be pushed and pulled. Yeah, brother Durham, brother Matthew, they've done this before. They know what how to do it. Anyway, so that's where we're at. Anyway, it's sort of. A, uh, I would rather this happen after I was gone from here and the younger people had the headache, but. Brother McGowan anyway. said it sleeps before in the past, so this yeah, will be Yeah, I think Brother McGowan, Brother time. Tally both have mentioned to me that it, they had a leak under there one time before. I guess they tore up the parking lot and found it. I don't know. Is that what y'all did? So, you know, it's probably not too big of a hole. The, seven and a half there's gallons seven and a half hour. gallons an hour being lost. I mean, Brother Durham has shut it off checked the meter, waited, you know, a few hours and seen how many gallons it, it lost, uh, it was used in the meter. But seven and a half gallons an hour, you know, that's like 180 gallons a day and multiply that times 30 days to see what your water bill is going to be. Yeah, well, the water bill... We got that $1,700 water bill. Now, here's the way that works. It's kind of amazing. Our water bill was around 300 Our sewer bill was 1400 Because the way they're looking at it is, is all of this excess water which that you use, they're looking at it that it's leaking out of a commode or somewhere and going into the sewer drain. But when they found out it's coming underneath the ground and it's not going into the sewer, they they rebate the whole 1400 And they've even, Brother Durham's worked with them for years at the schools, they've even told him they would even rebate the excess water usage when we get it fixed. So that's very fortunate, you know, that because this month's bill is going to be an enormous bill too. We got it. Uh, Laura. How much is this month's water bill, Laura? Eleven hundred dollars this month. Less, See, and we've been shutting it, shutting down, and doing all kinds of things. Trying to, but it was leaking before we knew. We didn't know it was leaking underground. We were just making sure there wasn't any leaks for the first couple of weeks or so, or maybe even three. So, anyway, but probably of that, there's probably two hundred dollars worth of water and probably eight or nine hundred dollars worth of sewer that they're charging. So, you know, you raise those sewer bills. It's not a great big. It's, it's not near as bad. Okay. Let's, let's talk about the Word of God. <laughs> um, I um, hear week before last I talked to you all about, I talked to you on the Ten Commandments. And I utilized the fact that, or I mentioned that the first four commandments, the first commandment, uh, is that you're to have no other, no other God before me. The the um, the second commandment is that you that you're not to have any graven images. Uh, here I'll read them to you. That shall have no other gods before me. Now, I'm in Exodus 20, verse three. It's also in Deuteronomy five, but this is the first place where. Moses got the Ten Commandments. 
Now, these Ten Commandments has never been done away with. Uh, they're just as much of God's uh, commandments as they've ever been. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. These are one right after the other, starting with, this is in verse 4 through 6. Or any likeness of anything that's in heaven above, that's in earth beneath, or that's in the water, or uh, in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, am thy Lord. Thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation, unto them that hate me. Verse 6 says, And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Uh, then the other one is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Um... I, you know, I went all, I went over these. Then, the fourth one is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, and I told y'all that these fir, these first four commandments has to do with your relationship with God. The next six have to do with your relationship with man, as well as God. But but it it they're written to cause you to have the right relationship with man. The next one is, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and give you the next six. Uh, you, ought to, you, ought to, you ought to learn these, and you ought to learn them in order. You know, it, it, it's real easy to do. I... I do that. I go through a lot of things that I rem of my, in my memory at night when I go to bed. If you can't sleep, just start quoting what you know to quote in the Bible, and you'll go to sleep pretty soon. <laughs> but you know, I'll say the twelve the the twelve apostles' names. I'll say the the Ten Commandments. I'll name every book in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and you know, I go through th some things like that. Uh, just to keep my memory a little bit sharper. and uh, But, okay, and these six, these six is honor your mother and your father, then thou shalt not kill. That's sort of interesting because you wonder, because the next one after that, thou shalt not commit adultery, and then thou shalt not steal. And you think, why did God put, you know, surely God had some order here because he put the first four that had to do with our relationship with them, then he puts the next six. But you'll find thou shall not kill does have to do with, it does have to do with honoring your mother and father. Because when you dishonor your mother and father, you kill their influence. And God goes right into that. And so uh, then, you know, if you love not man whom you have seen, how are you going to love God whom you've not seen? So this has to do with honor. Remember this. Um, in the tabernacle, you've got the, the, the gate. You've got the altar, brazen altar. Then you've got the laver. And then you have the linen garment change. And, of course, the holy place and the holy of holies. Well, the, 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 here's four things Brother Leninger taught him, but he didn't, I don't think he put them in this that order. I worked on them a little bit. Um, faith is the gate you get in in the tabernacle. You, the principle of faith is absolutely necessary for salvation, and it has to be given by God. And then the brazen altar is humility. That's where you learn humility. To humble down, publicly go through water baptism. You know, sometimes I think we ought to go, I'll go find a muddy river and get baptized over in it. Just humble down and go through, go in the winter. 
Yeah, who was that in? Uh, where was that at? Yeah, I was trying to think. There was a there was a brother in I believe it was in Kerrville. Who who was that? It wanted me to baptize them. Is a dead winter, cold, freezing weather, and they just had to be baptized. And I took them out into a pond, and we like to froze to death. I didn't go under the water, but I put him under. I felt like holding him there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have needed to be baptized again, really. But anyway, I can't remember who that was well, right Dr. now. Bellows? No, it wasn't Dr. Bellows. This was in... It was, it was. It was in Winters. It was Monty Oakley. <laughs> Dear Lord. No, we went to a city lake. I don't remember, but anyway, I think it was Monty. It had to have been somebody like him. Anyway, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. See, that has to do with taking the Lord's name in vain. All of these will go back to the main the first four uh, thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor and thou shall not covet thy neighbor's house your neighbor's wife manservant nor his maidservant nor his ox nor his ass nor anything that he has so so okay so today let's talk a little bit about the fifth one thou shall honor thy mother and thy father Um, so Exodus twenty one fifteen. He that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Um, we'll read, and he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. He that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. So God put a very strong uh, penalty on dishonoring your mother or your father. Uh, and if you, uh, if you go back to, you know, the, the, the commandment itself, because Paul mentioned, you know, he mentioned it's the first commandment with promise. Jesus, uh, Paul did. Jesus did too. How thy father, honor thy father and thy mother, and that thy days may be long upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, um, there he gave promise that you'd have long days if you could honor your mother and your father properly. And, um, <clears throat> of course, the bottom line to this honor, I, I don't guess I finished, the humility is in the, in the brazen altar, the labor is fear, the fear of the Lord. There's where you'll learn knowledge, temperance, and patience, and there's where you put on the principle, learn the principle of fear, fearing God, fearing that if I don't have the you know, if I don't if I don't obey God, there's a penalty for not obeying God. And the more knowledge you get in God, the more the more fear of God you'll have. Uh, <clears throat> and then the garment change in the holy place is honor. There's where you have to learn how to honor. You have to on, learn how to honor your brother more to a place where you will honor God properly, or you'll never enter the holy place without the proper honor for God. Um, so, um, now, uh, go to Leviticus 19.32. It says... Um, Uh, 
Um, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God. I am the Lord. Well, I put this uh, scripture in here, even though it's not mentioned in your mother or your father, but you see the principle that God wants us to get out of honoring your mother and your father is, uh, is, is order. God wants us to learn how to honor uh, authority and that it has to start with your parents if you don't honor your parents you're not going to honor anybody else and uh, so there's where you know there's where you know many many years ago and of course still today a lot of people but we're losing a lot of this order in in our country but you know when I was a little boy you never, I didn't make any difference who, if somebody was older than you, addressed you, it was also, you always answered with a yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am. Or you'd get bopped on the head or something, you'd get in trouble if you didn't have that kind of respect for your elders. And uh, some of those things have slipped today, but, but I can promise you in raising children, it's very important that you teach a child how to honor their those that are over them, those that are elders to them. Um, l- let me give you a scripture while we're in First Kings uh, two nineteen, where Bathsheba went before Solomon, her son, the king, to speak to him. 1 Kings 19, uh, uh, 1 Kings 2, 19 says, Bathsheba therefore went unto King Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed himself unto her and sat down on his throne and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on his right hand. So, you know, of course... What she done, she caused Adonijah to get killed, or his brother, but uh, because she was she did was doing Adonijah a favor to get him to so that uh, he could marry Abishai. But Solomon knew what was up, and so he had him killed immediately. And he said, "What do you want me to do? Give him half the kingdom?" You know, because he he knew his spirit and why he went to his mother to do this. But my point here is, is that when his mother came in, here he's the king. He didn't just rise up to, to recognize her with honor. He had, a, he had a seat brought in and sat right beside his throne and had her sit in it before he even addressed her about anything. He showed her great honor. It was planted back then, and that that you to have that kind of honor towards your mother, you know, your father, those that, you know, uh, and, and of course, when you learn to have that kind of honor towards them, then that puts an order in your life to where you honor those that are in authority. Brother Smith? Uh-huh. It, it's in today's age even when children are taught to say yes sir and no sir, yes ma'am and no ma'am, oftentimes the people they're saying it to don't know how to receive that because they don't have proper order in their life. That's right. But it's still important to teach the children yes sir, no sir, even when the other person doesn't know how to receive it. Otherwise they won't learn order either. Right, and those children, sometimes you need to explain to the children uh, why they're not getting, you know, the response from the, from the older people or the, you know, those that are elders to them that they should be getting. Sometimes you have to go over some of these things with kids to be more, ex- uh, to make it more explainable to them. Uh-huh. Would that also be not just saying it, but 
doing things like holding the door open for elder people, standing up and getting up and letting someone else that's older than you have that seat, things like that. Right, yeah, recognizing those that are in authority and showing them honor in deeds, not just in words. Um, <clears throat> Proverbs 1 8, 1 8 through 11. It says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Um, you know, I mean, you can carry this far, this far that... Uh, uh, hear the instruction of your father. Well, God really is the father of creation. He's our father of the source of life. And the law of our mother is the church. And if you can hear God's instruction in the word of God, and then if you can not forsake the law of your mother, the, the church the order, the standards, the, the traditions. See, some things we have are traditions. There, we, some things we don't have, you know, and, and we have to watch our traditions that they don't get out of line with the Word of God, but there's traditions that are necessary in every society because of whatever is needing to be substantiated or planted in society to hold... Uh, certain principle. Uh, traditions help hold principles uh, like, like dress standards, for an example. There is a principle behind that, and standards are important. Commandments, you all have heard me say over and over, because I want you to get it, that no commandment, if you're keeping a commandment to be righteous, It'll never make you righteous. Now, let me explain that because it needs it needs understood that commandments are absolutely necessary in your walk with God until these commandments gets in your spirit to where they start becoming a part of your character. It's no longer a commandment when it's you. I don't have to keep a commandment if I'm righteous in whatever I'm doing, whatever. For whatever principle I've got of God is instilled in me and I'm established in it, I'm not doing it to keep a commandment so that I feel like I'm righteous. But until I get there, I need these commandments to hold my flesh in place, to, to hold the flesh down where God can work in my life. Because if, if you don't have discipline, and if the Word of God can't discipline your life, you will never get to a place that the Word of God becomes a part of your character and that those principles are part of you. And so, but my point is this. If you're just looking at the commandment, will I do this? Remember what Jesus told the young man when the, he, the man came to him and said, what do I, what I need to do? And Jesus said, okay. He said, he gave him, you know, the, he, he said uh, to honor God. He gave him, you know, some of the Ten Commandments. He said, I've done that ever since I'm a child. He said, then go sell everything you had and come follow me. He walked away sad because he had a lot. Well, see, he was keeping a commandment to make himself righteous, and he was counting himself righteous, but the bottom line was he wasn't willing to give up nothing to follow God, to trust God and do God's will he wasn't willing to do that. He wasn't willing to give up self for that. And Jesus proved that to him. Well, I'm just showing you that, that, you know, commandments, and that's where I've harped about, you know, and, and you have to be careful about this because I'm sure you've heard, you know, I don't know if Brother Tucker taught it this way, but the ministry has way back even in his day, just like, for an example, getting people to worship God, get them to, 
raise their hands, get them to shout, get them to dance, get them to, you know, manifest praise to God. You just say a little bit on that, and you can stop people. You see, it's hard to put that in people, but it's easy to take it away from them. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I've, I've, but I have, you know, I have used uh, commandments as well as standards. One of the reasons I have is because I saw in the body, I saw it planted in this church right here. I'm talking about the Little Rock people. I saw that the biggest part of these people that were raised up in Little Rock r equated dress standards as righteousness. Didn't matter how rotten their spirit was. I've seen rotten spirits in these people, but they held a standard that blow you out of the water. They, you know, they wore their hair like they're supposed to be worn. They wore clothes like they're supposed to be worn, so they thought they was righteous. But their spirit stunk. And that was my point. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a conviction. I mean to tell you, I really have a conviction. I, I don't do like I do because of, I've been commanded. I lived like this before I ever met the body. Sister and Crow, I I'm not talking to you. Sir? I'm not talking to you because I think you've got it well, right. Well, I just want to add in. Okay. I think when we're discussing, if you can have some add-ins, it makes us all understand better yeah. and all. I've been criticized because of the way I dress. But, brother, I have strictly got a conviction. And I, I have tried to do the other things. And, brother, I got rebuked. I mean the Lord rebuked me, and I know it was the Lord. I could tell you some things <clears throat> that I started to do. And I mean, he made me so ashamed of myself, I couldn't say it. But I'll tell you what, I really, I really and truly, I hope y'all believe me, that I have a conviction. And to do any different than what I'm doing and to dress like the world, brother, I'd have to take Sister the time Crow, down. Sister do you think that I'm advocating to dress? Sir? Do you think that I am advocating to dress less than the way the body teaches. No, no. Okay. Well, I'm not. You shouldn't. I'm no. not. And no, so, you've been around long enough you ought to know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I feel like, you know, Sister Crow's been around this long time. There's no question that she understands the dress standards that she's got in her life. I'm not talking about Sister Crow. No. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And Brother you, Smith, uh -huh. when, uh, I was in the Assembly of God Church. Back when I was in there, they had a good, a good standard. I'm from the Assemblies of God, like and that's exactly did. right. They had and I remember, excellent standards. I remember when, yeah. when my mother began to, uh, I was the only child of my family that was, uh, you know, that was living for the Lord, mm -hmm. and uh, she made me three length, uh, three length uh, sleeves and long sleeves. I was thrilled to death. I loved them. I still love them. And yes. so uh, I'm just saying this to, you know, like to help everybody. That's I understand that. The, one of the things that I'm trying to deal with, Sister Crow, is you got a bunch of young people in here absolutely don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Because loving three coarse sleeves and all that don't make a bit of sense to but them because believe those things yeah. were lessened down through society for so long that a lot of our young people have lost it. So they don't, they're, you know, back when you was a child or when I was a child, we had a great appreciation. There was a lot more fear of God. There right. was a lot more holiness promoted to us. And so, but it's different today. Right. The, the society of America is totally different. So yeah. you've got to deal with them. You've got to make them understand part of the side of why they think there could be some foolishness yeah. to it. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do is help them. But at the same time, I'm saying all these commandments are very necessary. Right, right. They're necessary. And I got a good thought one day when I was reading about the, the fall of Adam. After he sinned and done wrong and, and uh, made some aprons, the Lord come in. He had to kill an animal, and he put a coat on A coat covers up more than an apron. Okay. That was a thought I got out of it. Right. All right. Okay, let me go cuz we're going to we're going to miss these um um I I'm in this scripture in Proverbs 1:7 to 
forsake not to hear the instruction of your father, forsake not the law of your mother, and I'm using that as actually carrying it all the way to God and the church. It'll be an ornament of grace. There's where grace, God's favor, is added to you because of your obedience and because of your recognition of authority of God and authority of the Word of God over your life in God's ministry. And it's chains about your neck. In other words, it, it shows in your life. It's chain, chains about your neck is like, a, like jewelry. It's like a, a, a adding to your dress. Uh, a recognition well when you have certain uh, attributes of the word of God and the commandments of God added to your life and you live by that then it's it's like something that you've added it's an attribute that it's added to your life that's recognizable by people that see it okay then um Okay, if you'll go back to Proverbs 15 or go forward to Proverbs 15, 5, it says, A fool despiseth his father's instructions, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In other words, uh, a fool that despises his father's instruction. Um, in one place it shows that, uh, that you know, if... It, uh, the eye that doesn't recognize his father, the, the young eagles will pluck it out. But here, uh, he that regardeth reproof or uh, recorrect correction is prudent or is uh, wise uh, to recognize how it's going to bless their future. It's, it's the same way in a job. You know, I've you have people sometimes they're doing a job like I've, I've had here uh, lately uh, I've had in the last several months I've had some men that I've had do some work for me and one young man told me he said I don't want to do this I don't want this job because I'm just a helper I'm nobody I want to be I want to do what my boss is doing you know, they don't recognize who I am they, I want to do you know I said, well, you got to start on the bottom, and you got to work up. Do a good job where you're at, and they'll recognize that, and they'll promote you. But if you want to be something you're not, and you don't want to learn the basic principles, you're never going to you're never gonna get anywhere. So, you know, some people want to skip. <laughs> you know, they want to skip the, the different levels of development to try to get somewhere, and that, that, that goes to... Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You don't be a don't be a liar. Don't be something that you're not. Learn, you know, when you're on a job, I tell people all the time, you get on a job and you do an outstanding job, you're gonna get promoted. I can tell you that right now. Especially in this world. Because there's not very many people that recognize all them principles. All you gotta do is get on a job and just do a good job. People are gonna recognize that. Um uh, Okay, that was in Proverbs 15. Proverbs 23, 22 says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and an understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. The, thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. In other words, it, you know, it blesses it, uh, not only naturally in the family, but in the church when you've got people that are, uh, that are workers in the church. They're faithful. They develop talents. It blesses the church. The whole church rejoices in those kind of people that have that kind of order, that kind of honor, that kind of respect for the house of God. They, they get this principle of having order of authority, working under authority, and letting that authority and it, uh, bless their life and favor them. 
Um, now let me go to Matthew 15, 48, because this scripture, I think, needs a little bit of explanation. And I thought I'd just go ahead and give it, uh, because, uh, you know, you're going to run across this scripture, and you're going to wonder what it means if you don't already know. Verse 4, Matthew 15, 4. Uh, it says, For God commanded, saying, Jesus is saying this, Honor thy mother, thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Now he says, But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition, you hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy unto you, saying, The people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Uh, what this scripture is talking about is what Jesus is referring to is, is a Jewish tradition. Uh, Jewish law required sons to care for their aged parents. 1 Timothy 5 8, Paul iterates that um, about being an infidel if you don't take care of your parents or your family. However, corrupt priest back then in Jesus' day, what he was dealing with, they allowed sons, they called it Corban. It was a vow of Corban where they took the money instead of taking care of their parents, they gave it to the priest as a sacrifice and therefore they were excused from having to take care of their mother and their father. And that's what Jesus was dealing with. He was dealing with the fact that they were annihilating the law of God and bypassing the honoring and taking care of their parents uh, and making sure they were properly taken care of and they were getting out of it by giving a gift to the altar rather than worrying about their parents and doing, you know, uh, be, taking on that burden. So... <clears throat> Uh, anyway, that's what that scripture is, is dealing with. And then, of course, Ephesians, let me give you this real quick. Ephesians 6, 1 through 9, there's slews of scriptures, but I think I've pretty well made my point. But Paul, in Ephesians 6, says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on earth. Then he says, And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and admonition of the Lord. See, I mean, there is a responsibility on the parent's side to make sure that I'm instilling this principle in my children. At the same time, I'm not being a, a hard taskmaster and, you know, trying to drive them into doing something rather than helping them understand the purpose of the principle and why it should be done. He goes on in verse 5, says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Um, so uh, he goes on, you know, telling the masters, to be careful about how they treat their servants too. So there's two sides of it. Um, then um, I'll give you Hebrews 13 and 7, which is sort of the crux of the matter. Remember them that are which are over you in the Word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. So. It, this this honoring your mother and father has everything to do with how to respond and work properly under authority and have order in your life 
that all that goes all the way back to God. So even though these these six commandments, and this is just this one today that we're dealing with, but these commandments are uh, very needful naturally, but they they carry us into uh, the spiritual principle of what these commandments are are to develop into in our lives and and uh, help us have a, a life that's not only pleasing to God but is righteous. That's the whole bottom line to it is these things have to be in our character eventually where we're righteous we are righteous in our character. That's that's what takes us to perfection. Anyway, I know we're out of time but I was talking to my wife about this last night. I said, you know, I know people want me to go on with the rest of these, but I said, you can only do about one a week, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because there is a lot to be said about these commandments that, that, you know, just to say thou shall honor your mother and father, there's a whole lot more to it. You'll see when we get into thou shall not steal, there's a whole lot more into that. And thou shall not commit adultery, that's a whole lot more than just being unfaithful to your husband or your wife. It goes all the way back to being the harlot system against God, you know. So, anyway, we'll take a break, and I'll see you upstairs. God bless your hearts.